I am so thrilled to be sitting here with dear Janet, this dear, dear, dear Janet. And of course, with the anticipation of how Janet is this amazing channel for Zach, Master Zach, who is an emanation of the great field of light in the Ascended Master realm, and particularly in the trajectory of Joao Kool. So to you all, welcome, 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 Beacons of Light. Thank you for joining us. We have a short time together. And so without more ado, I know that Janet and I already had a preamble chat. So we have a rough scope of awareness about where we may go. Um, but I'd, what I'd love to do, ladies and gentlemen, is get straight into this remarkable conversation with Master Zach. Is that okay, Janet? Absolutely. Okay. I'll leave you carry on talking. Um, only take a moment or two, I'm sure. I can feel him absolutely on my shoulder and I'll bring him through. So for those of you who are unfamiliar, who are listening in, Janet just needs a moment or two to prepare so that she places her own ego aside and becomes a very open channel for the wonder of the master to come through. Uh, what is germane amongst us all today and at this time is the humanitarian crisis that we're all facing. And of course, our hearts and our souls send great love to and great prayers to the people of Ukraine. Welcome. Welcome, Master of Zach. Welcome. It's so wonderful to be with you again. You have elevated me to Master. <laughs> <laughs> I am telling everyone to elevate the whole time. Why not give myself a promotion? <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so glad you agreed because you are of this extraordinary celestial light. And you always touch us so deeply. So thank you for receiving <laughs> this appellation. Zach, we're living at extraordinary times here on planet Earth, which I know has been concerning many people who are joining us this evening through this time recording, or indeed in the future, as they listen in. Uh, I wonder if you have any immediate comments about the nature of humanitarian crisis, and particularly this one that we're facing in relation to the wonderful people of Ukraine. You are living at such a critical time in human history, in Earth's history, indeed. And what you are seeing evident in all conflict with violence across the globe, everywhere, that comes into your living rooms, that comes into your life, that comes into indeed your heart, is showing you the difficulties that are still present on the planet. There have been and still ongoing many, many conflicts all around the world, which you may not be aware of or get a little bit of uh, uh, airtime far, far, far later on in news and all of these things. What is happening at the moment, indeed, is putting the attention of the eyes of the world. Now, something to be said, even in the darkest hours, even in the times when your heart feels it suffers for yourself and also for others, there's a changing that is happening in a changing of response, a changing of reaction, a changing of heart. This is something uh, uh, that I've been speaking a lot recently, and you know my different, mm. uh, regarding compassion, self-compassion and compassion for the art. And indeed, something that I've been bringing to the attention uh, in uh, preparation for this, the need and yes, I am using the word need, not just suggestion, but the need for us to activate our original design of humility, 
for it is in humility and when humility really comes home to the heart that compassion can go far beyond the reaches of a, a, a thought, a projection, a useful act. Compassion that can build a bridge of hope into such times of care and collaboration, understanding uh, uh, and hope. Yes, that bridge of hope. Understand, yes, my dear? Mm, absolutely. And the teaching is so vital. I'm hearing you correctly, am I not? That what we need is to really cease reacting and consider response as being a new creative endeavor. So thereby, we still are a neurological system which is affected by the concern, the fear, the despair, the remorse, as we view uh, through our mass media communications some of the things that are taking place that are obviously quite brutal and cruel within the wonderful principality of Ukraine. So response is the thing that takes us into a new level of behavior. Am I hearing you correctly, Zach? But absolutely, because this is putting a spotlight on something that uh, all spiritual teachings, yourself and others, have been talking of for some time. This need to be in charge of ourselves, in charge of the maturity of our energy, of our spirit, so that, yes, it is natural to have reaction because you are human beings, you are living in a physical world, but to also catch yourself in that reaction and say, is this reaction that I am having, is there anything that I can do with it? Once I add my heart to it, once I add my humility, compassion, these things we're talking about, once I add kindness and grace to it. Mm -hmm. Because uh, reaction can be a little bit like a runaway train, you know? Mm -hmm. Because the heart feels strongly, can have a strong reaction to something that it perceives. And remember, our perception also uh, indicates our own uh, mirrored perception of something. Mm. Everything that happens in the world uh, has deep, deep complexities within mm. it. Mm. Only, uh, as it is before, but you know, only particular scholars and certain people really mm. know the truth of any situation. Okay. Mm. But what we all have, whether it is something like this that we are talking of, whether this is something that is happening in our lives, whether it is something that is happening with our family, whether it is uh, uh, to do with our education, our work, our relationships, whatever it may be, we have reaction. But mm. what we fuel it with then turns into the action. Mm. So do we feel it with something that we feel is justified? Do we feel it with uh, righteous anger? Do we feel it with uh, uh, mistrust and judgment? All of these things do not normally have a happy end because they fuel reactions into something that can become aggressive, even though may justify your aggression for it. Mm -hmm. However, when we catch ourselves in the reaction that we are having and we say, now, hold on, let us just breathe. Or however, you know, people have different practices. Mm -hmm. Let me just uh, uh, almost put it through the filter of my heart. Mm. Let me see. Now, that does not mean to suddenly say, oh, everything is okay, because that is not human. That is uh, childlike, you know. We are spiritual beings. We are mature, and we will still have our perspective. But we can say, what can we do in our reaction that broadens our perspective, that allows us to be aware of complexities without trying to know what they are, without trying to necessarily resolve? but say, what part do I want to play in this? Do I want to play a helpful part, a literal physical helpful part? Is this something that I want to do where I can uh, 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 be of service to somebody who cannot be of service to themselves at this time? Mm -hmm. Or is it something that we can even just uh, bring our love and our heart to it? Because, you know, all the grief, all the suffering all over the world, as I say, in uh, too many countries to mention and in too many homes and in too many institutions where people are suffering. This seeps out, you mm. know, and mm. this comes out. Uh, when you see a liquid, you see it seep into the floor. Mm. 
Mm. You do not see the energy that comes out, and this populates the field. This populates the uh, collective unconsciousness. This populates the energy. Some people who have been in a very, very uh, uh, difficult time emotionally may even see their own house plants start to fade. Start to, you know, because nature picks up on it and it is seeping out. Therefore, you could even say to yourself, I will do this for the good of nature. I will do this for the good of my garden. I will mm. be able to choose mm. the reaction that uh, uh, I go with once I have my initial reaction mm. to then be able to come from a place that I would like others to come to as well. You know, what do you want to see other people do? Do it yourself as well. Just mm. thank you. This is wonderful, Zach. Thank you so much. And as always, it's multi-layered in so much in beautiful intelligence and wisdom. So I understand you correctly that what we need is to really find stillness within ourselves, having practiced meditation for many years, to really feel stillness so that we can see that what we perceive before us is a screen of our own consciousness. Although it apparently appears to be happening over there, it really is a projection of something within our own psyche that needs to be healed. And thereby, this becomes a quantum leap of experience for we humans on our planet at this time because within our soul in stillness we have the power to be able to heal whatever is taking place is is this right absolutely and if you are listening now my dear friends and you think but i haven't got years of meditation practice i am not a monk i have not done these things i've been busy i've been bringing up a family i've been working i've been doing things fear not Every single person at this time on this planet, due to the frequency of the earth, due to their own frequency vibration, even if you do not understand my meaning, please do know this is different than it was last year, the year before, 10 years ago. You have abilities within you without any training at all because the power of what you emanate in your thoughts and with your hearts is way beyond. It used to be in terms of how much it influences and impacts. Therefore, if you think, well, I don't know how to get stillness through my breath or through my meditation, everybody can sit still and have something that when they focus on brings a level of calm. Maybe this is uh, your pet. Maybe this is your child. Maybe this is a plant. I was talking of house plants. Maybe this is a favorite color or a picture. Something that resonates with your heart that brings you a feeling of comfort. Even just doing this, focus on this just for a few minutes so that mm -hmm. you do not have your mind going off if you have not trained your mind. Mm -hmm. Just bring yourself to a place where you're not busy, busy, busy in the cerebral, in the mind, going off on lots of tangents. And then just put your hand on heart if you're unsure where it is so you can feel it. <laughs> and then think about the things that you've just been thinking of. Mm -hmm. But imagine that you said to yourself, I apply the filter of my heart, my goodness, mm -hmm. my innateness. And even if you have self-worth issues, self-compassion issues, simply say to yourself, I'm not just doing this for the good of me. I'm doing this for the good of all. Mm -hmm. And you may be surprised what you find there. Mm -hmm. I have high hopes for humanity. Mm -hmm. Even in the depths of humanitarian crises, as these are called these days, environmental crises that we are seeing, everything that happens, there is the silver lining of an opportunity to change the cycle mm -hmm. from how it has been before. Every single person who has been to school knows that the cycle of the victims and the victors and all of these different things never really works out. There is never really a winner in that sense because that is all paradigm. Mm. The new paradigm is about collaboration, heart, trust. Mm. And you said it myself, yourself, my dear, to move into luminosity, mm. we must discover our inner grace and mm. to be the embodiment of uh, 
the desired paradise that we see on earth. Mm. And it is not as hard as people think to do mm. this. Mm. And yes. This is wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Thank you, thank you so much. And so I can see that people are very resourcefully feeling through their their life's apparatus, you know, and looking into all the beautiful images that there are in their lives, whether it be, as you were saying, house plants or trees. And I noticed that your your definitions were always about the sentience, the pure sentience of what takes place in the beauty of planet Earth, rather than looking at the man-made complexity or horror that may be there, of looking into, because all of these natural elements are filled full of the divine breath, are they not? Absolutely. When we fix it on something in particular, not ignore it, I need to be clear, not to say that doesn't involve me, because that is definitely a moving heart. Mm. But to see things, and this is the thing about spiritual maturity, when we were talking before my different, mm. and I was talking of compassion and spiritual maturity, a big mm. part of spiritual maturity is to look at everything that you see and remember the truth is fluid. Mm. And that no one person can ever know the full truth that they think that they know. Now that is no uh, smoke and mirrors saying, oh, this is true or not true. This is not about this. This is simply saying that anything that we look at, even if it is something very close in our lives, even if it is something to do with our uh, relationships, mm -hmm. even if it is something to do with our work uh, mm -hmm. or, or something that is happening in our community, we only ever see through the uh, lens Mm. of our own understanding, of our own awareness, of our own knowledge. And there's nothing wrong with that because mm. everybody has a part to play. It would be uh, crazy for mm. nearly a billion people on the planet to all have vast knowledge of absolutely everything. Therefore, where spiritual maturity comes in is whatever you feel, whatever you see, be open to say, I do not know everything, but mm. what I do know and what I can honor is my emotions, my feelings, and my love for humanity. Mm -hmm. When we start to disparage humanity, when we start to say, which I hear at the moment, when I look at the earth and all the people, there's a lot of people saying, we do not even deserve this planet. What are we doing? People in despair. And when you want to despair, you start to uh, judge yourself, judge others, all of these things. And that does not emit the higher frequencies to lift ourselves out and move into a cycle that actually shifts up to different outcomes. Mm. So when you are feeling it and you say, well, this is the reality, mm. say, no, this is the reality I have learned is normal at these times. Mm. What I can do is change the reality of the future, not mm. by ignoring, not by having heart, by having even more heart, mm. by having even more heart to allow myself to feel the presence of all humanity within me. Mm. So that as I am being human, I can admit what my desire is for all of humanity. This is a time to see yourself and your universe, all of humanity, however you want to uh, uh, use it in terms of vocabulary, as one. Mm -hmm. Whatever you feel, think of it as what the world is feeling. And then what you are going to do, imagine that is what the world is doing. Mm -hmm. Now, that is not asking you to come up for solutions to the world. This is talking about the frequency you want to emit. And that is why at this time, I'm talking so much about compassion. If we go into compassion, as I say, that is fueled <laughs> by humility. Mm -hmm. Only good things can come from that, surely. Mm -hmm. Can it not? Can it not? Can it not? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Zach, this is wonderful. And also to feel your energy providing us with this extraordinary slipstream of divine intelligence that you're giving us, reminding us of the immense intelligence that exists in the higher realms and how the, the higher realms, I feel very humbled in this moment, that you, you are available to us to speak.
and therefore you are giving us these gentle reminders but at the same time how how firm how intentional how full of conviction these reminders need to become thereby the extraordinary dynamo of our soul in touch with your cosmic breath can bring about vast change upon our planet we we wanted to call this uh, this 33 minute conversation a bridge of hope i hope that was satisfactory for you well not only is it satisfactory it's something that uh, maybe you have not considered about <laughs> the bridge <laughs> this is that bridging between our individual selves and our oneness mm. and it mm. is hope you inspired me you know because i was thinking to myself what could possibly work further because i have been talking about this and oneness for so long in yet understandably i see and i feel and i sense people time and time again resisting the pull to be one as if there are the matter is going to uh, go poof into the wind as if they are going to evaporate if they even consider the notion that they are one Mm. So if we would look at it like a bridge, and mm. yes, I am hopeful, <laughs> as well as the word hopeful. Mm. If we can allow ourselves to just put our individuality to the side, just as if you are stepping aside, just like she has stepped aside into her meadow to allow me to be here. Mm. Mm. She's still here. She knows she's going to come back. Nothing scary about that. And so if we allow ourselves and say if i feel myself as oneness with all and i do mean all not with these uh uh situations or with these people or with this but mm. with all because it only works if we do it with all uh otherwise we have little separate books uh, you know uh, groups it has to be with all when we do that mm. it allows us to be able to be a journal uh Uh, is that me you know a journal of living light a journal of luminosity a journal for a different way of being a journal to help engage a moving up a spiraling of a cycle of evolution and evolution mm. uh, uh, yes we may not uh, uh, grow more arms and legs and become like an octopus that is not the evolution <laughs> this is a spiritual evolution of the heart and therefore the bridge of hope and as uh, everybody that is listening will have their own uh, beautiful connections to what a bridge of hope is for them and where the bridge is taking them and what energy uh, is helping but you know those uh, energies let us call them simply energies such as myself and others i can do this now Yes, for lots and lots of esoteric, wonderful reasons that would uh, blow people's minds to explain, but predominantly it is because when we are one, we are not just one with the physical world; we are one as all souls. Therefore, uh, it is completely comfortable for Janet to move aside and allow me to come through, because in a way, her energy recognizes the same. Mm. because we are all one. Mm. And so there um I have the ability without a physical body to be able to adapt my frequency like you may change your jacket mm. my dear. And mm. I can do this. In physical world I appreciate it is far more difficult for you uh all to do this. But what you all have the ability to do is to say I'm going to think on this, I'm going to feel into this, I'm going to sense this in a oneness with the whole of the planet not just with the perception for my own limited view mm -hmm. ah, understand mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely and what you do as you speak as you reveal to us is that i can feel the whole of my field expanding so that i can actually feel the innate intrinsic wonder of oneness and so i i i thank you for that because as i as i face my own feelings in the dilemma of what is taking place in ukraine and with the possibility that i will be serving at some point this month the people of ukraine by going there and running a peace workshop um that i'm feeling that i move away from the narcissistic egocentric nature of me into a much more expansive
So dare I say that the bridge of hope becomes a ladder or stairway to heaven. <laughs> we have always promised you heaven on earth. And people have looked at their world and they think, how can this be? What the heaven of earth truly is, is putting everybody's destiny mm. into their hands. Mm. This is part of it. This is the time where you can really practice taking your destiny. Because destiny, it is understandable in a human physical form. Mm. When anyone says the words destiny, everyone thinks of the future and achievements, goals, what they're doing, what their purpose is. All of mm. these things, of course, important in people's lives. Mm. Destiny is what you also do with your heart. Mm. Where do you take your heart? Where do you take your responses? Where do you take your actions? Where do you show your love? The ultimate is to never shy away from showing your love constantly to the victim and the aggressor, to uh, the hater and the lover. Mm. Mm. Because you live in a world of polarities. Mm. And mm. even though in the noodle, people are thinking, what is he talking about now? <laughs> <laughs> it truly is about living in a space. Your destiny means that you can have freedom. You can allow yourself to be vulnerable because you have the humility, the compassion, the, uh, uh, the freedom, the fortitude, <laughs> the focus to live in such a way that you always feel the oneness and then whatever you come across yes you might not have the cerebral noodle perception of exactly what is going on with that person or why they are doing this or any other such thing of something that you find hard to reconcile in your mind hmm. but in your heart you know there is another that is a human that is a human that is a human and as we know every human is a soul and uh, there is no human beings on the planet that have been born, you know, normal biological way <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that uh, do not have a soul because mm -hmm. it is impossible. It is very easy for us to see when we perceive wherever it is in the world and whatever sphere, something that we cannot correlate in our hearts and say, well, that is just so terrible. A human being cannot possibly do that. They cannot have a soul. Mm. This mm. is a little bit of a childlike view of wanting to make it better, mm. to not believe humans. But every single human being is a soul and every single human being makes choices. Mm. We may not like their choices, of course. We may be anti their choices. We may not choose to have that person as a friend. Mm. But we can share our hearts because they are us and we are them on some level because everything is connected in oneness. Mm -hmm. We can tell ourselves it is not. We can choose to try and force ourselves into more and more separation. But what happens when we do this? We feel the cold loneliness mm -hmm. of being taken away. When we cut our ties, energetic ties with others, does it not hurt our hearts? Even mm. ties with people who we know are not good for us, it still often hurts our hearts. And this is because humans are designed, or should I say your soul designed you mm. to be in a place of constant compassion and mm. love and heart with all. Mm. That is part of destiny. And mm. choosing what sort of destiny you have the uh, the most enjoyable route I can tell you is when you put your heart first, because if you have peace within you, if you love within you, the world around you, whatever is happening, you have got your feet firmly on the ground, just like Gaia, and can come from a place of uh, integrity. Mm. Understand this? Mm more than understand i feel waves of energy moving not just over me through my aura but deep within every cell these reminders are just absolutely exquisite and of course what it feels to me that what you're really touching into is the fact that we're all born with this spiritual toolkit that our soul has this engineering hardwired within it 
And yet in the face of what we're seeing is crisis, we need to really take seriously this level of maturity and recognize how we can open the rich cluster of our soul and see it as being the preeminence of the divine. Zach, this has been amazing. I'm so sorry, but our time has come to a point of completion. But I want to thank you from the very core of me, from the depths of my soul for this remarkable meeting. Uh, you always feel me full of such humor. And so I want to thank you deeply and I look forward to seeing you uh, again very soon. And just one last thing. The whole yes. time we have been talking with the Bridge of Hope, all of the angels have been transmitting the energy. She has allowed this to happen through mm. to you as well as, as in uh, to everybody, of course. Mm. How can we be talking together without the angels, my dear? <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. And um, and all the wonderful people who have been tuning in. I mean, forgive me, I haven't been looking at you through the chat box. Um, but, you know, because the intensity uh, of what I wish to honor and respect and venerate and revere within Master Zach um, requires this level of focus. And I, so I hope you realize that I'm also speaking for you all. And, um, you know, come back and meet the wonder of master zach again in the future because i'm sure he'll be coming and having another wonderful summit conference with us and and for janet as well thank you so much pleasure pleasure shall i call her back now my dear please do thank you namaste namaste goodbye my dears goodbye <laughs> So while Janet just um, rearranges herself from that remarkable transmission, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I hope that all made absolute sense to you. It, um, it was certainly really amazing. <laughs> I mean, the whole of my body is sort of so hot. <laughs> Are you okay, darling? Yes, I think I might spontaneously combust. <laughs> But other than that, wow, his energy was incredibly powerful. Really? It was lovely and cool in my meadow, but it's boiling here now. I'll go and cool down and get ready for enchantment and join you there. <laughs> Bless you, darling. So um, as, as you hear Janet just saying, for those of you who are unfamiliar, that she very kindly is joining as, um, as a participant to a monthly full moon enchantment that I offer. And so this is taking place in all of 20 minutes at eight o'clock in the United Kingdom. That's three o'clock, I believe it's three o'clock in uh, on the Eastern Seaboard and one o'clock on the Pacific coastline. Just go to stuartpierce.com events and you'll see automatically uh, a way of being able to join if you'd like to. And uh, bless you, Janet, and everybody. Bless you, bless you. Thank you, Ryan.